So, the time has come. As of October 14, 2025, free support for Windows 10 is over. Your computer will still work, but it's now a ticking time bomb for security risks. So what are your options? One, you can pay Microsoft for extended updates, which can get expensive really fast. Two, you can try a complicated, unsupported hack, like using the LTSC version just to stay on Windows 10. Three, you can and probably should switch to Linux. It's free, secure, and runs great on any hardware. Or there's option four, you can move to Windows 11, but do it our way. That's what this video is for. Today I'm going to show you how to make the transition to Windows 11 not just bearable, but actually good. We'll install a clean, bloat-free version from scratch. And for those of you already on Windows 11, I'll show you how to perform a digital exorcism on your current installation. All you'll need is a USB stick, 8 gigs or larger, and access to a Windows machine for the prep work. For our demonstration today, I'll be using this HP EliteDesk mini PC that I'm prepping to be a home server. While I'm here giving it a quick cleanup, replacing the old thermal paste and putting it all back together, let's talk about the tools for the job. We'll be using two incredibly powerful and free applications, a script called WinUtil from Chris Titus and Revo Uninstaller. These tools will help us strip out all the Microsoft nonsense and build an operating system that respects you and your hardware. Alright, with our patient prepped, it's time to create our custom Windows installer. Since I don't keep a physical Windows machine around, I'm spinning up a virtual machine using UTM on my Mac. It's a fantastic free tool that's perfect for this kind of task. Okay, inside our Windows VM, the very first thing we need to do is open PowerShell as an administrator. Now, full disclosure, my first attempt on this failed because of a permission issue. So to save you the headache, run this command first. Just type it in and hit enter. This will allow the script we are about to run to actually, well, run. Now, here's another little quirk I ran into. When I tried using the recommended version of the script, it couldn't download the latest Windows ISO. After a quick search, it turns out this is a known issue that's already been fixed in the development version. It might feel a bit odd using the dev build, but remember, this is a community-driven tool designed to give us control back. A few rough edges are well worth the freedom it provides. Copy the command, paste it into the PowerShell, and yeah, it opens in light mode. First order of business, find the dark mode toggle for the sake of our retinas. Ah, much better. On the top of the window, you'll see a bunch of tabs. If you already have a Windows 11 installed and just want to debloat it, you can skip ahead to the timestamp on your screen now. For everyone else doing a fresh install, stick with me. We're going straight to the micro win tab. On the left, click get new ISO automatically. You can select your language here, though for me it only shows English options. Maybe it's based on my VM language settings, so your mileage may vary. Then click Get Windows ISO. It will ask where to save it and then the download begins. Don't be alarmed if a prompt pops up asking to download something from GitHub. Just click OK and let it do its thing. Go grab a coffee. This will take a few minutes. Once it's done, the real fun begins. We get to customize our Windows install before it's even installed. First, the SKU. I'm picking the Pro version, but you can choose whatever you need. The driver options? I'd leave this unchecked unless you're reinstalling on the exact same machine and you know what you're doing. Vertio drivers and Ventoy. If you don't know what they are, you probably don't need them. That's my motto, and it served me well. Now for the user account, you can set a username here. I'll call this home server. Don't worry, I wouldn't actually run a home server on Windows. I'm not a monster. You can also set a password but if you leave it blank, you'll get a passwordless automatic login. We'll leave the rest as default and hit start the process. Now we wait again. On a powerful machine, this might take like 10-15 minutes. On my VM, it was closer to 30. If you're curious, you can watch the PowerShell window. You'll see it surgically removing unnecessary features, OS packages and all that app bloatware like Spotify, WhatsApp and the rest of the usual suspects. And we're done. Let's just quickly check the file size. The original ISO was a little over 7 gigs, and our new lean version it's over 6. It's not a massive diet, but remember, it's not about the size, it's about all the junk that's been ripped out from the inside. Next, we need to make our USB stick bootable. For this, we'll use another legendary free tool called Rufus. Make sure your USB stick is selected under device, then click select to choose the new clean ISO we just created. I like to change the volume label to something more descriptive, but otherwise you can just leave everything else as default and click start.
once the Rufus is finished, you can eject the USB stick and move over to the computer where you want to install Windows. You'll need to boot from USB drive. This usually involves spamming a key like F2, F10, F12 or delete during startup to get into the boot menu. Every manufacturer is different, so a quick web search for your specific model might be necessary. From here, the setup is pretty standard. Select your language, time and currency format and keyboard layout. Make sure you select install Windows 11 and accept the terms and conditions that nobody ever reads. And now a very important step, partitions. If you have a single drive like I do, you can just delete all the existing disk zero partitions until you have one block of unallocated space. Then you can select it, click new and let Windows create the necessary system partitions. Make sure the primary disk zero partition is selected and click next. A quick but serious warning. If you have multiple drives or existing data you want to keep, please stop here and do some extra research. The last thing you want to do is accidentally wipe your family photos or important documents. Be careful here. Okay, now click install and let it run. The PC will restart a few times. That's completely normal. And here we are, a clean fresh desktop, no annoying pop-ups, no Cortana trying to be your best friend, you'll just notice a PowerShell window that runs some final tweaks automatically. For me, the taskbar took a few seconds to appear, but it sorted itself out. Okay, now for everyone who skipped ahead, welcome back. You've already got Windows 11, but it's probably feeling a little cluttered. Let's fix that. First, connect to your Wi-Fi. Then, just like we did in the VM, we're going to Chris Titus's GitHub page, grabbing the PowerShell command and running it to launch Win. Util. Once it's open and you've switched to dark mode, let's head over to the tweaks tab. For a great starting point, just select one of the recommended profiles, like standard. This applies a bunch of common sense fixes and from here you can customize it. For example, I will disable hibernation, the bloat edge, you can hover over any of these options for a description or click the question mark next to them to get even more details on the GitHub page. On the right, you have some handy toggles for things like enabling dark mode or showing file extensions, which is super convenient. Once you've made your selections, just click run tweaks and let it work its magic. The config tab has some advanced shortcuts. I'm not touching it, but it's there if you are a power user. The updates tab is really useful though. You can force Windows 10 to only install security updates, which is what I recommend, or disable them entirely. Finally, the install tab. You'll find here a huge list of popular useful applications. You can just click on any app you want to install, say the Brave Browser, 7-Zip, Crystal Disk Info, Hardware Info, and click install. It will download and install all of them silently. It's a massive time saver. Now, WinUtil does a fantastic job, but to take our deep bloating to the next level, we need one more tool, Revo Uninstaller. The free version is all you need. You could actually install it from the WinUtil app, but I missed it during the shoot, so I am just grabbing it from their website. When you open Revo, you might not see much on the main page if you used our clean install method, but for those who didn't go through that, you might see a lot of stuff here worth uninstalling. For the lean version of Windows 11, the real treasure is in the Windows Apps tab. Ah, there we go. Look at this stuff. Game bar, Xbox identity provider, things I know for a fact I will never use on this machine. To uninstall something, just click on it and hit the uninstall button. Revo will ask you if you want to create a system restore point. Just do it. Seriously now, check this box. It's a 5 second click that can save you hours of headache if you accidentally remove something important. Click continue, let it run and then click scan. This is what makes Revo so powerful. It hunts down all the leftover registry files and folders associated with the tab. Select all the registry items items it finds and delete them. Do the same for any leftover files and folders it finds. This is the difference between just taking out the trash and actually cleaning the kitchen. No leftovers. And there you have it, a cleaner, leaner and frankly much less annoying version of Windows 11. Whether you did a fresh install or clean up an existing one, you're now in control. You have a system that gets out of your way and just lets you work or play. The end of Windows 10 free updates doesn't have to mean compromising on your user experience. With great free tools from the community, you can make Windows 11 work work for you, not the other way around. If you found this guide helpful, a like and subscribe would be amazing. Let me know in the comments if you have any other tips for taming Windows 11. Thanks a ton for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.